Welcome to another episode of Millennial Investing Explained. Here's today's question. And so of the six financial instruments we've talked about that you can invest in, which do you think is the best for millennial investor, Stig? I think it really depends on the investor, but if I should generally give a piece of advice, I would recommend that millennial investors should start investing in stocks. Now, keep in mind that not at any cost. You know, there is one thing that is the price of equities or the price of stocks, and then you also have the value of stocks. And I know that you, Robert, later would do an episode specifically about stock valuations. But having said that, conceptually, I think stocks should be preferred. Primarily because stocks, and keep in mind, whenever you own a, a stock, you own a real company. If that company makes a profit, that money will one way or another be returned back to you as the owner or part owner of that company. Gold or oil doesn't generate a profit in itself. And just that makes it much harder to make a profit for you as an investor, especially if you are a long-term buy and hold investor. And that is that is really what we are talking about here. We're not talking about buying gold because you think it will go up in price over the next three weeks. We are talking about buying an asset and hold it for many, many years. And that you just have a lot of tailwind from investing in stocks. Now, bonds also have a cash flow since, again, this is money you lend to someone else that pay you an interest. But in the environment that we have right now, and we're recording this in June 2019, you know, we just have a low interest rate environment. So the cash flows from bonds you can generally get are just not that attractive. And even if the interest rate should go up, you need to consider that the cash flows from bonds can typically be expected to be lower than stocks since it's a guaranteed payment, whereas there is no guarantee but more upside with stocks. If you're not completely sure about how to value a stock, and it can be a bit tricky, I would really recommend for the new millennial investor that you look into a low-cost ETF tracking the stock market first. And whenever we talk about the stock market here, there might be the S&P 500, it might be Dive Jones, uh, Russell 2000, generally a large basket of stocks. That's really what you're looking for if you're just starting out. I agree completely. Investors can absolutely build a great portfolio by keeping things simple and just buying a few individual stocks and ETFs and then just letting them compound over the long term. That's all for this episode of Millennial Investing Explained. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or subscribe to our YouTube channel to get even more free content.